joining us now. We have a member of the Iowa Hawkeyes, Tristan Wirfs. Uh, you get to do the walk-on, man. We're live on TV. Here perfect. we go. This is perfect. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Oh, it's great. I'm doing great. We've had fun here at the Scouting Combine. I'm reading up on Tristan Wirfs. I'm impressed. You can do it all. State wrestling champ. Yes, sir. A.K.A. don't mess with Tristan Wirfs. What, <laughs> what weight class were you in? I was heavyweight. Uh, and also, a little shot put, a little discus on top of it. I'm always fascinated by the field events. How did you realize that you had the skills to, uh, to throw that discus. The shot put seems like it's a little bit easy. That discus, I mean, it's like a really heavy frisbee that you got to be able yeah. to fire down the, um, the field as far as you can. Yeah, I struggled with the discus, you know, when I first started, just because I kept wanting to just, you know, put a lot of power on it, like oomph on it. But you ever put one through someone's car shield, uh, you know, windshield on no, the car? No, but we had tennis, at our practice throwing area, there was tennis courts at about 190 feet, and my, my uh, junior, senior year, I started throwing it over the fence, so I'd have to wait till the girls were done with tennis practice to, to throw a disc. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you don't want you don't want to throw a disc over the fence when they're there playing yeah, tennis, that that's be, for that sure. that would be good. Um, so uh, what, what was more rewarding for you, the, the, the uh, winning a wrestling match or having a good showing with the shot put of the disc? I think winning the wrestling state title was the most rewarding thing because I put so much work in it. Like, I came into the season weighing 322 pounds, and I got a, I had to... I had to cut 37 pounds to make to make 285. That's the that's the limit for heavyweight. Um, so all the all the hard work and I put into cutting that weight. Wait, how know, much weight did you have to lose? 37 pounds. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, you know, all that all that dedication and discipline I put into it, you know, was you know paid off in the end with the state title. So I think that was the most rewarding. When did you realize that you were going to have the kind of football talent that you have to put yourself in position to be drafted? You know, I'm not sure when I when it's when it clicked or when I realized it because you know coming into college my freshman year it's the NFL still felt like like a dream like it was far away. Um, you know, then each year you know it it, you know, it became more realistic and and um, it, it just got closer and closer. And then you know eventually I, you know all of a sudden I had to make a decision. You know, it, it felt like it went by so quick. Now I'm told that you're the first true freshman to ever start under Kirk Ferentz at Iowa, which is just remarkable. You had to be shocked because you had to know coming in, no true freshman's ever started, so I'm not even going to think about starting. All of a sudden, I'm starting. When, when did you find out that you were going to be the guy to break that mold? Um, so we were, we were playing Iowa State. It was the second or third game. We had a senior off the tackle, um, Ike Butker. He's actually with the Bills now. He's, you know, he's, he was kind of like my, like my big brother coming in because we were locker buddies. Um, but I remember we were playing Iowa State, and he ruptured his Achilles, um, and he went down. I remember, I remember seeing him. You know, on the, I was on the sideline seeing him, and like my stomach just dropped to my feet because I was like, it, it, it was a tie, tie ball game at the point at that point. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna have to go in there, you know, right now. Like, I'm, I'm gonna lose us the game. I was like, I'm not, you know, I wasn't ready. But, um, you know, they, they shuffled some of the old linemen around. But, um, it was third or fourth game of the season, and you know, next, the next week, I was, I was in there. Who's given you best advice as you prepare for everything you've been going through the past few weeks, and will go through the next two months? Um, I think Coach Ferentz, uh, you know, gave me some of the best advice, you know, especially for, for making the decision to come to the next level. And he just told me, he said, you know, you've done everything we've asked here and, and more. He said, you've won the game. He said, you've, you've earned your, you, you've given yourself the, you know, the ability to make this decision. Um, so he said, you know, go enjoy it. Um, he's like, you only get to do this one time. Um, but, it's, you know, that's what I'm trying to do, just, you know, have a good time here and live it up. When you're around all these other offensive linemen, I mean, is there camaraderie or is there kind of like, I'm like, I could take you. I think, I, I yeah. can take you. Oh, I can't take you. I'm not going to go in your direction. How much of that goes on? I think the first the first day or two, it's kind of it's kind of like that. You just, you know, you don't want to step on anybody's toes and you just do your own thing. But then, you know, as you, you know, as you settle in here, um, you know, you, got, you start talking to guys more, you know, meet, meeting new guys. Um, it's you know I think it's a little bit of both. And you probably come out of it after being here four or five days, phone numbers, yeah. friendship, text. Yeah. You know guys you may be teammates with, guys you may be squaring off against. Who's the guy when you get to the NFL you're really looking forward to lining up against and blocking? Oh, that's a good question. I think there's you know there's a couple guys like Miles Garrett. Like I remember seeing him when I was in when I was in college, still just thinking that he was just he was a monster. So it'd be cool it'd be cool to block him. Um, and you know JJ Watt. That's all. You know he's he's been kind of like a perennial, you know, a perennial player. Uh, you know with that that you know me that I grew up as a kid. You know um, in, in middle and high school watching. Um, Isn't but, it weird though to be on the brink? 
yeah. of stepping onto the field with guys you grew up watching on TV. Yeah, just as I said that, I was yeah. thinking the same thing. Um, it's weird, you know, going from going from watching them on TV, you know, in middle school to now, you know, you know, I'm about to step on the field, you know, with those same guys. When did you have your big growth spurt? I had a couple. I had a couple growth spurts. Um, I think it, you know, I used to have grow I, like growing pains. Like my mom, I, I thought I was sick, but. I wouldn't have a fever or anything. I would just come home from practice or come home the, for the day, and like my my quads would hurt really bad, and I'd be I'd be like achy, almost. It felt like the flu, you know. You're, you got body aches. And I would sleep for like 14 hours, 15 hours, and um, you know, then uh, another week would go by or something. My jeans wouldn't fit; they'd be too short. Just stuff like that. So I like I had like a couple of growth spread. I don't, I don't think I had one big one, um, but because I always thought I was sick, but it was just just growing pains. You told us about having to lose 37 pounds to get to the limit for the heavyweight wrestling division. Do you have to fight now to keep weight on to, no. to be at your playing weight, or this is it's no, yeah. it's all natural. It's just it's just yeah, I can I can eat you know what what I want, but I have to I have to, I have to watch it like so I don't go over so I don't go overweight. Um, but uh, you know I don't I don't gotta like fight to keep weight on. It's a lot of these guys that play offensive line in the NFL when they're done they they they, they, they become a bean pulse. There's nothing yeah. to them. Do you see that in your future when you're done playing football? Um, I don't know. I don't think I'd get too skinny, but <laughs> maybe maybe lose a couple pounds. Yeah. Um, who was your favorite team growing up? You know, I never had a favorite team growing up. Um, I, I, I don't know why. I, I liked watching. You know, certain guys. I loved watching Ray Lewis. I'd watch like his highlight tapes on YouTube. Um, then when I got to like middle school, I like watching Tyrone Smith, the Cowboys left tackle. Um, I, mean, I like watching J.J. Watt, but I never had a, a favorite team growing up. My mom's was the Steelers. My my uncle's was the Chargers. So um, I, I kind of watched that. My uncle was kind of like he's like the father figure. So I I, I would watch them with him. Um, but I didn't I didn't personally have a favorite team. Is there a guy that really will have you just completely and totally starstruck when you when you it's like I'm on the field with this guy and I can't believe it's happening. I think Tom Brady. I think that, you know, a lot of guys will probably say that just because, you know, he's... A lot of guys have said Tom Brady. Yeah. A lot of guys. I, yeah. Just because he's been in the league for so long and, you know, it, it's weird. We, like, grew, like, actually grew up, you know, watching him. I mean, yeah, it was 20 years. How yeah. old are you? I just turned 21 in January. Yeah, you were in diapers. Yeah. When the guy so, started playing in the NFL, it's yeah. amazing. It's got to be amazing for him. There's got to be a point where he just looks around and says, I'm old enough. I am old enough to be these guys' father. Yeah. So, all right. Well, hey, Tristan, we wish you all the best. Tristan Wirfs, Iowa offensive lineman, first true freshman to ever start for Kirk Ferentz. A huge accomplishment. We wish you all the best moving forward in the NFL. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.